In Serbia, we are undergoing a transition from a state finance higher education to a higher education which will be led by uh, neoliberal market principles. And by gradual, I mean that government is every year imposing new cuts and making us, forcing us into new concessions. And it is really hard for us to tackle this government strategy and to fight the neoliberal reforms because of the formal student, formal student representatives because they are, uh, in a way, participating in the, pro in the process. They are being consulted by the government uh, uh, to a uh, uh, certain extent. And uh, so government always can say by the mass media or mainstream media, why are the students uh, uh, struggling? Why are they protesting about the principles of higher education when they have the representatives which are making the decisions about how the higher education will look. And uh, this year uh, we had a very interesting situation because the, uh, the overall students' representative body, uh, SCONS in Serbia, didn't do anything about the new government measures, about the new cuts into the uh, spending for higher education. And uh, they uh, made a vacuum on that uh, scene. Uh, so the self organized students first on the faculty of philosophy uh, could use uh, could make you could make uh, could use that situation as to uh, as to form their own demands from the government and that is really what happened because schools didn't react to the measurements and decisions of the government uh, students organized in an assembly or plan on the faculty of philosophy and they have made up a list of their demands uh, but SCONUS, as a higher representative body, didn't want to uh, lose the control over the movement, so it staged up, uh, it scheduled a protest on the 7th of October this year, which was really a catastrophe for them because they only managed to mobilize around 2,000 students. I mean, the University of Belgrade has around 80,000 students, 90,000 students, uh, that is really a miserable number. So, uh, Plenum on the Faculty of Philosophy then voted a no confidence vote to the SCONUS and distanced itself from the SCONUS and those protests. And any eventual agreement which would SCONUS uh, get to with the government. Uh, and they made an agreement really which was a uh, total disgrace because uh, students had, uh, they had around four or five demands from the government and only one was uh, fulfilled and not totally. So uh, then that alternative movement, the movement on the faculty of philosophy, uh, came into the being, really. Because uh, self-organized students in plenums, they uh, voted their organizational or coordination bodies and they started the occupation of the faculty. Uh, it all started in the first weeks of October and the general idea was to try and to link the movement on the faculty of philosophy with the movements on, and the students on the other faculties. That was the general idea on the beginning of uh, the movement, but it, it later failed. I will speak more about those reasons. Um, and as the movement was uh, in the beginning, there was uh, an incident uh, in which the neo-Nazi formations stormed the faculty and attacked a number of students on the faculty. Uh, that was really describing the, the situation because why? Uh, students, uh, in meaning of exactly that, if students are a political subject, uh, we perceived uh, student struggles and student movement as a socially oriented movement, which is fighting uh, against neoliberal policies of the government. And that is how others perceived, it, perceived us especially right-wing formations, neo-Nazis and fascists alike. Uh, but what happened then? It was really a problematic moment which, uh, in, my mean, in my opinion, hampered the, 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 the movement in its core because uh, when the neo-Nazis afterwards made their appearance on the plenum and they said it wasn't us who attacked the students, we won't attack you, we will support you, and then the plan uh, made a decision to distance itself from the leftist organization because it said, okay, we're only students, we're fighting for our demands, for our rights, we don't want to engage in a social struggle. I mean, that, that's not what they literally said, but the implications of their decision were those. 
And I think that, that was the key moment because we, we missed uh, an important momentum. We've got, uh, we've got, we've got to solve a situation that created out of thin air. I mean, the lawyer's syndicate was in strike. The syndicate of educational workers was in strike. The syndicate of transportation workers in Belgrade was in strike. Uh, many syndicates of healthcare workers were in strike. And there was no attempt from the movement itself to link the movement of students with those struggles and to make a wider impact. Uh, well, uh, I think well, it, it was exactly for that reason, because the, the students themselves perceived the movement as only a student movement. Because they wanted to, uh, to, to evade the situation from 2011. From 2011 we had a, an occupation on the Faculty of Philosophy, which was then attacked by all the mass media, mainstream media, and all the politicians, and all the other students, as an ideological profiled occupation. They were saying, okay, those are the Marxists, those are the socialists, and they're having their, their crazy ideas about the free education and all that, and they're just trying in this sectarian manner to fulfill their aims. And, and I think uh, that a lot of leftist organizations, or those organizations which perceive themselves as leftists, made a big mistake this year because they also wanted to, uh, to evade that situation. They didn't want that situation to happen again. And so they uh, didn't openly set and didn't openly advocate for a social struggle. They were involved in the student movement and uh, we were saying, well, okay, this is great, we're having something and we will work out with students because we think that the, the, the struggle radicalized itself and the experience of uh, direct democracy and direct participation of students will change their, uh, their way of thinking. I mean, like that of Marx, uh, the, the social practice changes the, the social awareness of people. And uh, that, that, that was really a, a great mistake. It, it, it was shown after. It, it, showed, it showed afterwards that it, that was a real great mistake. And uh, except for the, move, for the movement on the Faculty of Philosophy, there was uh, an occupation on the Faculty of Political Sciences where I'm studying. And it started out in the same manner. Uh, students were first participating in those uh, protests scheduled by the schools, or that high representative body of students. And uh, after the failure of those protests, uh, uh, students and the, their formal representatives on the faculty level felt that they, they were left alone. They didn't have any way to fight the decisions of the faculty, and so they had to radicalize their struggle. And, uh, and in, in first time, after many years, a plan was called, and students assembled uh, in plan. And uh, that was really high moment, the highest moment of the moment in fact of political science, because you could feel the enthusiasm and the militancy of the students which wanted to struggle, which wanted to, to, uh, to fight for their rights, and uh, uh, the occupation was voted anonymously. I mean, that, that was really, really a great moment. But what happened there? Also, uh, we didn't have a real direct democracy in practice. We had a plan. Students were there, they were speaking, they were uh, making their claims, making the, uh, forming their demands. But the uh, working body, which was setting the agenda for the movement, was not democratically controlled body. Because there was a number of those student former representatives, or even not them, there was not, there were no people, there were people in those co coordinating and working bodies who were not elected by students. They were just some people who had, uh, I don't know, uh, general, uh, general, general impact on, on in student movements before, and so they were looked upon as someone who is fighting for students' rights. And that was the real problem. We didn't have a real working direct democracy, so students couldn't uh, couldn't uh, uh, couldn't transform that movement into something more. It was channeled by formal student representatives, and uh, it was uh, completely hollowed out because they didn't want uh, any mentioning of the social struggle in the movement. I mean, if the uh, movement on the fact of philosophy distanced itself from social struggles, 
the movement on the faculty of political sciences distanced itself from the movement on the faculty of philosophy, even further. So as it, it, it really became a ridiculous situation in the one point. Uh, and the movement on the faculty of political sciences was, uh, the occupation was lasting until the, the management, management of the faculty uh, made some small concessions to the movements and at, at the first sign of the concessions everything was called off. We were, okay, there's no need more for the occupation. We made, we, we, first we, su we succeeded in what we wanted to do and it is enough. What is enough, it is enough. And I mean, uh, so students on the faculty of philosophy are now left alone because well, that will fail. And uh, as I was speaking before, there was a general idea to make some kind of higher coordinating body and to try to export the movement, as to say, on other faculties, but it did not succeed. Why? Because students on other faculties uh, uh, always are looking upon this, the movement on the faculty of philosophy as a leftist. It is a general, uh, general, general uh, opinion among the students that the that the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, there's a fence between the faculty of philosophy and other faculties because they are thinking, okay, they're too radical, and we don't want to have anything with them. I mean, and if you have that situation, even in this year, where the mood on the faculty of philosophy is not radical enough that it is a genuine problem you are facing with. And, I mean, uh, the, there were some problematic moments also. I mean, uh, the right-wing organizations felt that they are finally having an opportunity to uh, make an impact on students and to go into a student struggle. Because of that uh, devoided situation, you know, you, the, you have hollowed out the movement, you don't have any really, really an essence of the movement. You're just fighting for some epic claims, and that's all. And then you have the situation when right-wing organizations come to you, the ones that have beaten you up yesterday, and then they say, okay, we're with you, we support you. You, you have your demands and we support you. And the students are looking at that like, great, okay, we have wide support. Uh, the leftist organizations are supporting us, the right-wing organizations are supporting us, that's great. Okay, we, we, will, we will succeed in what we want, we will uh, make the man the faculty to make these concessions to us. And uh, I mean, the, there was really a problematic situation days before, I mean, it was last Sunday, when the fascist organizations wanted to make a kind of a, a public speaking, I know, on the faculty of philosophy, and of course that uh, Antifa organizations on the, or left organizations organized themselves and prevented it. I mean, uh, there is really a problematic issue of that, uh, what to do with the blockade, it does, which doesn't have with occupational faculty, which doesn't have a real character. I mean, that, that's a form. You're having a form of struggle, and you form, you're struggling for some demands, but you, you don't have an essence of the movement. You don't know what you, you really want to achieve with that movement. And uh, we didn't want to allow that movement to go further, to dwell further into the right. I mean, it, what is enough it really is enough. And uh, so, in that sense, uh, I think that uh, we had a great potential. The situation was, uh, at, at first, we were very enthusiastic about everything, about the movement. Because finally, students had a chance to see that those former representatives which they elect, I mean, those elections uh, uh, are really a, a total farce, and there's no real democratic character of the elections of the student representatives because only a minority of students is participating and you don't have an open, transparent, democratic procedure on many faculties uh, and so you cannot say they are legitimate student representatives. And finally, we have, uh, the students had an opportunity to see that, that they are not really representing student interests, they are not really fighting for us 
and so let's organize ourselves and fight. And that was the situation to start us, and we were really enthusiastic about it. And then there was all those uh, small movements, small protests, uh, and we were hoping that in a way we could link them and uh, form something more important, something bigger, something which would uh, eventually uh, maybe even grow into a full open social uh, protest against the government and its measures. Uh, I mean, how are you hoping to fight the, uh, the government decisions and measures in the, uh, in the field of higher education when you're not even questioning the general way of their, their reforms and the general way they're making policies and making decisions. So it, it is really problematic. 